Hello, this is the fifth video in the Dragabone series and in this episode we will be looking at the Curve Editor which is actually open on screen right now. Now, some of you, um, also the Curve Editor is not in the amateur armature side of Dragabones, it's in the animation panel. It's this, to open the Curve Editor, we go down to the timeline and right here, if we hover on this last little icon here, like an S, it says Curve Editor. You click on it, it goes, it goes green, and it should appear somewhere in your interface. Now, it could appear up here, it could appear over here. The thing is, you can customize Dragabone's interface however you want to. So I'll dock it down here. I usually like to have it right here next to the timeline. Let's go back to the armature side now of Dragon Bones and let's prepare something so we, so we can show, see how the curve editor actually works. And what we're going to be working on is just a little bouncing ball, a classic little exercise most people who want to do basic animation um, try to do. Bouncing ball is one of those few things we all have to learn how to do. So I've already imported some art assets for bouncing ball, which is actually the logo. And just to make things fun, I'm also importing some red eyes because I want to do something funny at the end when the while the ball is bouncing, I want the eyes to turn red and then back to normal. So I'm going to align these up as we've seen in a previous video. Bring it up. Mm -hmm. No, I want to put zero and zero. Come on, zero. Yeah. And I'm going to move these up here so they touch the ground. Let's, let's consider that this axis here is the ground level and I'm going to hide the root. So I'm going to attach these two art assets now to a bone and what we're going to do we're actually going to move the bone up and down to create the bouncing movement of a bone of a ball I mean a bouncing ball. Let's do that. So um, create bone make sure we go exactly to the base of this and go up. Now why Mm -hmm. There we go. Why do I need to go exactly to the base of the ball? You might be asking. Well, let me attach the assets first to the bone. There we go. And if I move and turn the so and turn the selectability off. Now, what we're going to actually be animating is this: the bone up and down. But if we want to create a realistic movement for a bouncing ball, not only do we need to access the curve editor where we'll see soon how we create a, a slow in and slow out or fast in or fast out movement to our bouncing ball, but we also want to create the squash and stretch effect. And as we've seen in previous episodes, each art asset inherits copies the translate uh, transformation of the, of the bone it's attached to so when a bone moves the assets that are attached to it move with it when a bone rotates there you go but they rotate with it so what's left scaling there we go scaling exactly so we're going to use the bone for the movement and the squash and stretch for the bouncing ball and then we're going to use the curve editor in the animation side to create a more realistic movement of a bouncing ball where we actually see gravity because when a ball goes upwards it has to slow down it stops at some point and then comes down fast again hits the ground squash and stretches and then moves up again and repeats let's go over to animation so I'm going to clone this here and we're just going to call this bounce I hope I've spelled it right here we go and we're going to do a very small cycle. We're going to select the bone and you now keyframe is here on zero. And let's say that on 30, it's back here again. So at 15, let's see, move, move. So in 15, it should be somewhere up here. Now, if I press play, we have a very mechanical linear movement. That's not right. Because what happens, although we've got the, we know that the ball on zero is here, on 15 it's up high, and on 30 it's down here. It, we, to have a realistic bouncing movement, we cannot have the space between the two 
furthest positions equally divided. That's not how gravity works. It has to leave fast and slow down. This is where the curve editor comes in. And as we've seen, we opened it, it's over here. How does it work? Let's select the keyframe at frame zero. Now, as we can see from the curve editor, maybe I should move it somewhere in here, nice and bigger, so we can um, see it there, that's nice. It shows that it moves. It has a linear movement, so it's divided the spaces, the spaces, it, it, um, all the positions, the fit from zero to fifteen equally. We want it to leave fast and slow down towards there. We have these options down here, like none, linear, ease in, ease out, and ease both. If I select, and what happens whenever you change one of these modes here, it only influences the movement of that specific, whatever you've animated, if it's a I key, an IK, a controller, a bone, from this keyframe, only up to the next one. So whatever I do here will influence this part of the animation. If I select the first one, which is none, this is what happens. What it did was, it says, I will do no animation all the way to the last one and just quickly show it there. We don't want that. The second one is linear. It moves straight from 0 to 15. The third one is ease in. Let's see what this does. As we can see, it, move, it starts slowly and gradually speeds up. By saying speed up, it doesn't mean it gets to frame 15 faster. That frame is locked in time. What it does, it divides the spaces the ball occupies between frames 0 and 15. Instead of having to divide them equally, it divides them in space in such a way it creates the illusion that it's speeding in towards frame 15. I'll play again. And you could actually influence it even more because it's a spline here. It goes even slower. We want the opposite effect to happen. Let's select again this frame and go ease. This is called ease out. Let's play. There we go. It slows down as it goes up there. And if I select now the frame on 15, and what do I need? I need it to leave slowly and speed up. Maybe it's the opposite. Let's see. Mm, we're slowly getting there. I need to create a little more oomph in this. So I need it to go a bit faster. And for the other position, again, a bit faster to move in. Let's play again. There we go. That's a bit of a bouncing movement. And if you're all curious what the last one does, this is usually one that most beginner animators love to use. It's a cheat mode. Um, if we're not sure what we're doing, sometimes like the previous um, exercises we did with the mechanical arm we did, many times we use ease in, ease out between keyframes. So it creates a soft movement between keyframes, more of a wavy movement, like, you know, like something's like a boat on, 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 you know, on the surface of the sea. We don't want that now. Let's go back to we wanted to, let's see, oh, I did a boo-boo, that's the wrong way around. I need it to slow down as it goes up and speed up as it goes down. There we go. That's great. Now, what else do I need to do? I need to create the squash and stretch for this. I'm gonna select the bone this time, and this time I'm gonna do scaling on the bone. So, I want it at the bottom, Let's see, I want this. Let's see if it works. So I'm gonna try this out. I know that I want it at frame 15, it's going to be 100% as it is. No, I mean, it's normal size. There we go. But, let's make some more room here. On frame zero, I want it to be scaled down only in one axis, like this, and I'm going to save that. Let's see what this does. Hmm. Let's copy that scale and to the last 30. Okay. Nearly there. I don't like that because usually the ball, when it leaves somewhere here, it should be hitting. Let's have it a bit of an overshoot. So it, it starts squashed. And by this frame here, about four, it's already overshooting. It's going more than it should. 
you know, it's gathering speed. Let's do that. Let's see what this. That's a bit comical. I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete that. Maybe I'm gonna go here to frame four and just hit one. Let's see now. Right, so it gets back to its normal shape by here. It's okay, and when it comes down, now we don't want that. Now here we got a problem. We wanted to hit the ground at normal size and then stay here for another three frames, right? And in those three frames, I gotta work on this now. I select the bone, I'm gonna scale it down, and maybe do this a bit. Let me see how this works. Right, so it comes down, it scales back, does that, and then I'm gonna get all these frames here. Give them another three. Right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start putting making this faster. I want this to end at 30. So that goes there, that goes there. So I've got 26 frames, so it's 13 frames up and down. Let's see. That's a bit too much. Let's say it's 22. Right, let me try that. I'm going to delete you. So we don't want that there. So it's like that. It squashes down, it comes back up. And I didn't save it. There we go. Now, Oh, that's cool. So what we have is the moment it's just about to leave the ground, it's normal scale size. It goes up, as we saw the movement from translation here, it slows down. Its scale is the same, it hasn't changed. It comes down, it speeds up. So we have, as we can see, a this is called an ease in, which means it speeds up. And then down here, we've done an extra animation, we've done after the bounce, we have the squash, where we actually just animate the scale of the bone. Let's go. And what I'm gonna do now after this, I'm gonna actually also animate the eyes. I'm gonna have the eyes at zero alpha channel there, at zero there, and a quick one, 100% there. And also zero there. Let's see how this works. So he sort of like gets a bit angry when he goes down there like, hey, I don't like this bouncing. Now, that's pretty simple. We saw how the curve editor works, how we adjust the speed, and we also saw a little more how we can actually use scaling on the bone to create little deformations on the art asset associated to it. I hope this was a nice little um, video that you all learned something. Because um, a big part of animation is getting rid of not having everything linear, but having, giving a bit of life to them. And just putting in that placebo effect of gravity and squash and stretch makes animation much more fun. I hope you all had fun, like this little video, and see you soon in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.